by request, adding a second endoscope camera to Octoprint to see exactly what the nozzle is doing. If you've never heard of Octoprint, you should definitely check it out. It's where you connect a Raspberry Pi to your 3D printer, which lets you access it wirelessly over your local network to start prints and even make really cool time lapses. If you want to know how to set it up, I have a video on that. Camera integration is one of the main features of Octoprint, and I had a request from two of my patrons to show them how to add a second camera, specifically an endoscope, which is a close-up camera for getting high detail. The idea was that they wanted to be able to monitor what was happening directly underneath the nozzle when they weren't necessarily in the same room to make sure the first layer was going down correctly and no other mishaps had occurred. I got there in the end, but there was a bit of command line work in Linux to get everything set up. That's not really my skill set, so in this video I'm standing on the shoulder of giants and building on others' work. The advantage of that is that this video is very well suited to beginners, so without further ado, let's begin. Firstly, let's have a look at the endoscope camera. And this was a cheap one, I think around $10 off my local eBay. It came with surprisingly good instructions and for the price, it seems fairly well made. One disadvantage is that it has a flexible gooseneck which holds its shape. Not the best for this application if we expect to mount it to a moving printer. It also has a dial for the built-in LED to adjust the brightness, a USB connector for the Raspberry Pi, or this neat little flip down with USB mini and then a clip-on USB-C adapter. That means I can plug it into my phone and test it out. As you can see, it's good at capturing close-up detail and should be ideal for focusing on the nozzle. Whether you've got an endoscope like this or just a regular webcam, adding it to Octoprint is the same. In the video description will be a PDF version of this step-by-step -step guide and it will of course be free. As I said in the intro, I was standing on the shoulders of giants of more knowledgeable people than myself. So what I present here is step by step and hopefully easy to follow. The first guide that I followed was a blog post on the website Makers Mashup. It doesn't have a specific author to thank, but it's a great article and it got me 95% of the way through. The last bit came from this video guide by Chris's Basement. This is linked in my guide as well as a direct link to Chris's channel and as it says here, it's a lot more comprehensive with a lot more customization. If you want to take your multicam setup to the next level, then please check it out. Now we can start to work our way through the steps. And step one is to determine the IP address of your Octoprint Pi on your network. This is the address at the top of the address bar in your browser. And for me, it's 192.168.1.9. We're going to need this address quite a bit in the future, so take note of it. The second thing we're going to do is install the multicam plugin for Octoprint. We're going to come up to the spanner, plugin manager, get more, and then type in the name. Now, if you're like me, and for some reason that's not coming up in the repository, I've got the exact URL here, so you can copy it, come down to the from URL section, paste it in and click install. It'll download the necessary files and prompt you to reboot. Click yes when it does this. Now step three won't apply to everyone, but if you're running the webcam tab plugin, you need to disable or uninstall. You can see here on my control screen, I don't have the webcam feed. Instead, because of that plugin, it's moved to its own tab. So I'm gonna come up to the settings spanner, down to plugin manager, scroll to the bottom to find the offending plugin, and then I'm gonna turn it off to disable it. Once again, we're gonna restart and wait for the interface to reload. So at this point, if you haven't already, you can connect both of your webcams to the Raspberry Pi. Now these warnings are taken from the multicam plugin documentation, and they say that depending on your power supply, you may need a powered hub to run the two cameras as well as the Raspberry Pi, and that depending on the parameters you set your cameras to, it might hit the performance of the Raspberry Pi CPU. Now if I switch to my control tab, I can see I have a camera coming up, and there's a heading for webcams, but only one is listed. If we come to the settings and scroll down to multicam, we can add a second webcam, but we have no idea what the address is. Unfortunately, this is not set up for us automatically, and that's where we get to the meat of this tutorial. We're going to need to get our hands a little bit dirty on the Linux command line. 
So with that in mind, we're going to download a small and free utility called Putty. The Putty website is listed and there's a download link up the top. Once Putty is installed, you open it and you will receive a box like this. This is the first time where we're going to enter our IP address that we took note of back in step one. Once we've entered it, we can click open. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, you might get a security warning message come up. That's completely normal and you can click yes to proceed. The default login for the Raspberry Pi is username Pi and the password is Raspberry. However, for security reasons, it's strongly recommended that you change the password with the command passwd. The first thing we're going to do in PuTTY is to check for our connected cameras. Now for any of these commands here, you can copy and paste them into PuTTY. So we can simply highlight from the document and do command or control C to copy. And then in PuTTY, we simply put the cursor there and right click to paste. And then we press enter to run the command. CD stands for choose directory and we're in the device directory. And now we're going to run LS. That stands for list and it will list all of the devices. And you can see here we have two videos, which are our two webcams, video zero and video one. Optionally, you could unplug one of these, run the LS command again, and one of them should disappear. For now, we've got a big tick because we can see that both of them are recognized by the Pi. The configuration for the default webcam for Octoprint is set up in a text file called Octopi in the boot directory. We're going to do a little bit of editing on this to begin. Now we've used the keyword sudo here, which stands for super user do, and that gives us admin privileges to edit files. The first thing we're going to do is manually tell it which device is the default webcam. So we're going to copy this and come to the end of the line, camera USB options, and inside the double quotes, I'm going to make a space and then paste. If you're interested in some of these other things that I've set up here, I've linked the document that explains all of the parameters and you can experiment as you see fit. Now lower down, we're looking for the lines camera HTTP web root. We want to set it to be dot slash www. And then inside camera HTTP options, we're going to copy this one here and then paste it inside the double quotes. Now both of these steps we've just done are just manually stipulating what is already the default parameters, but it's going to save time in the next section. We can press Control X to exit. And since we've modified the file, we press Y to save. Finally, enter to keep the same file name. Now that we've done our pre-tweaking, we're going to make a copy of two default webcam files. Firstly, we navigate to the root binary folder. We make a copy of a service file for the webcam. This file is called webcam D and our copy is called webcam 2D. And the second one is making a copy of the configuration file that we just edited to make a second version octopi hyphen cam 2. For step 11, we're going to edit the configuration file that we just created by making a copy of the original. Now, if this looks familiar, it's because it was the file we were just working on an exact duplicate. But as the instructions say here, we're going to change our device from video zero to video one. And we're going to come to the bottom and change our port from 8080 to 8081. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is lower my resolution for my second camera by a lot, just to help ease the load on the CPU. That's the end of our changes. So we can do control X to exit, Y to save and enter to keep the file name. Now, if you recall, we copied two files. So now we're going to edit the second one. Now this file seems daunting because it's a lot longer, but we only need to change two lines. We're going to come down to this line here that starts with if, and then all we need to do is to append hyphen cam two. We do this twice and that points to the file we were just previously editing. Once again, control X to exit Y and then enter. So that's actually all of the setup work we need to run our second camera. And we can test it now by running one of the files that we just copied. Now you can see a great deal of information has been spat out. You can also see it found two video devices, but because we stipulated it, it selected video one. It's also running on port 8081 as we specified. The last thing that I manually put in was my resolution. We can see that's been picked up as well. 
Now you can see what looks like a lot of errors here. They're for things like automatic focus, pan and tilt, which my camera doesn't support so I can ignore them. Now back in the instructions, it suggests that it's a good time to test that both cameras are working with these IP addresses. Remember that yours might be slightly different, but whatever it is, just add a hyphen 8080 on the end of one and then copy it with a hyphen 8081 on the other. We can see that my main camera is coming up and here's the endoscope hanging down. We'll see if we can get it up pointing to the screen. So all we need to do is change it from 8080 to 8081. And we can see our endoscope is working as well. Back in PuTTY, we can exit from this process by doing Control C. And we've proved that the camera is working, but unfortunately, this will not load automatically when the Pi is booted. So that's our next steps. Like we did with the default configuration files, we're going to copy two more files that automate this starting up when the Pi boots. We've copied our two files and for step 15, we're going to do a tiny bit of editing for each. What we're looking for are the words webcam or webcam D. All we need to do is to add a two to the end of each of those. I think there's around seven instances. Some of them are in the comments and aren't mandatory, but I'm changing them just to be thorough. We can now once again do control X, Y and enter. Now let's do the same for our second file. This one is a lot shorter. We're going to make the exact same change. Webcam D becomes webcam 2D. Control X, Y and enter. Now step 16 was missing from the blog and this is where Chris's basement came to the rescue. We need to reload some things to get the Pi ready for the next startup. All we need to do is copy and paste these two lines. This is the end of our work in PuTTY, apart from our final command, which is to tell the Pi to reboot. It's normal to get the message because the connection is being closed and we should now be finished with PuTTY. Once your Pi has finished rebooting and the interface reloads, we can do more or less our last step, and that's to input the addresses of the two cameras in the multicam tab for Octoprint. We'll come to the settings, scroll down, multicam, add our second camera, and put in the address we've set up. The first part is going to be the IP address for the slash colon 8081. We need to copy the slash question mark action equals stream from the line above. Double check for any typos, and if you like, you can name your second camera. With that in place, I can click save. My two tabs are now working, but you can see that the names are in reverse. To fix this, I can come back to my settings, go into the main webcam and time-lapse tab. I'm going to manually input the correct URL. And clicking test will let me verify I've got the right camera. Also make sure you update it down here for your time lapses. Because I switched them around, I need to come back one more time and change my endoscope to the correct address, which is port 8080. So now it all should be working. We have my default webcam and then my endoscope and I can switch back and forth as I see fit. So that's all of the hard work out of the way. So let's look at some ways that we can actually use this. We're going to examine two ways. One as an inspection during real time prints. And secondly, how we can use this with time lapses. Here is my final mounting. Things are very tight around the hot end nozzle, but I managed to find a way to get it to just fit into place. I designed this very simple two part system that clips onto the lower two bolts of the hot end fan. When the two halves are bolted together, it also has the effect of clamping the endoscope. And as you can see, it just clears the bed by about one to two mils. So let's have a look at how it works. Okay, we're about to start a print and you can see everything set up. This is a normal webcam feed. It's sitting on a mini tripod in front of the printer. And we can see it going through the homing motion. We can also see the endoscope poking out the front and coming up with the cord out of the way. If we switch to the endoscope feed, we get a nice close-up of the nozzle. We can see we're starting to get some ooze coming out. One thing I found difficult here is getting it to focus. And I probably also prefer to have the angle down a bit, 
but there's just not the space to angle the camera down and still clear the bed. Part of the reason I put down the lower resolution was to make sure that the Raspberry Pi could keep up with the higher frame rate, otherwise if this was going very jerky, it would be impossible to use it. Okay, we've reached the end of the print. I can switch back and see that the part is still there, but if I want, I can switch to the endoscope and then I can manually move my print head around and go in and inspect the print. Maybe this might be really handy if you couldn't get to your printer, you just really need to check if it was finished or if there'd been any failures. So we can see that the strand hanging off the nozzle eventually came loose, but fortunately my finished part is unaffected. One more thing, if we come to Octolapse, we can actually set up more than one webcam. So firstly we'll double check default webcam, and we'll edit this address to make sure it's correct. We can now save, and back in Octolapse we can come and set up a second camera. This is off another profile, but we should be able to retain most of the settings. Now when you start an Octolapse, you just need to make sure you have both of these ticked, as well as the overall plugin turned on. In the Time Lapse tab, there'll be two separate time lapses to download. The first one from the default webcam turned out like we'd expect, apart from bumping the camera. The second one, well, not so good. Because I sent it to the rear left every time a snap was taken, I've effectively got an octolapse of nothing. I failed here, but remember this technique works with two regular webcams. Now earlier on we spoke about powered hubs, we can see I have a warning up here, and the key tells me that I have under voltage. If I was going to persist with this, it's probably a good idea to add one of those powered hubs. That ends this guide, and hopefully there's something there of value for you, for you to experiment with. I really must thank those two resources that I used, especially Chris's Basement. He's got a very underrated YouTube channel, and I urge you to check it out. If you've got any ideas for how this can be used, please leave them down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.